Greetings and salutations, fellow train sim enjoyers and enthusiasts. We've got another Alco. Back-to-back -back Alcos. Hot on the heels of the uh, Diesel Workshop. C424 comes. Clinchfield's very own 4664, or uh, as they called them, E1, E2. And E3. These, of course, are a part of the Heavy Challenger pack that Magic Mike, a.k.a. Smokebox, released recently, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think, uh, and kept good, made good on his word almost immediately. Uh, brought these suckers out here before us now. It didn't take long at all. He said they were coming, and they came. Here they are. So this is a free update. Now, don't be confused. These things are not free, uh, not in any sense of the word. It is a free update. These were originally supposed to come with the initial pack, the Heavy Challenger pack, which is on Steam, which you can get for $24.99. Uh, they are now part of that. So if you don't have that pack and you were to buy it now, they would come with the, uh, the Clinchfield E3, which you see here right in front of your eyeballs on the screen of your mobile device. Or personal computer, or tablet, or television, or uh, I think I covered them all. But yeah, this thing's out. Dropped dual alcos back to back. Fellow alcoholics, rejoice! It is a good day. It has been a good 24 hours. So, yep, we got these things. We're gonna get a clean and dirty variant. Uh, so initially, Clinchfield Railroad ordered eight of these things uh, back in 1942. And then the post-war period, they saw four more delivered. So they had 12 by then. Um, I think they purchased six more. Now, the six more that they eventually purchased, I think in 1947, are these that are part of this pack. So there were the E1s, uh, the E2s, and then the E3s. These are the e 3 Now, they're all essentially the same. There are small variances, um, or variations anyway, but these are the ones, for whatever reason, uh, Denver and Rio Grande Western did not like these things. They did not like, uh, what was it, the L97 or something like that, L something. However they designate them, they did not like them. They didn't like the Challengers like UP had, UP sent them. Uh, so they didn't see a whole lot of service over there they weren't too keen on them and uh clinchfield picked them up so they went from up dnr gw to clinchfield so that's what these are here uh what is there like six of them so yeah six you're gonna get numbers six seven zero through six seven five uh and these betty's hauled coal through the Appalachian Mountains, which is currently where we're in, of course, the Clinchfield Railroad by Dovetail Games uh, on the Steam Store as well. I think it came in part of one of the Train Sim yearly releases of the 2020, Train, Train Simulator 2020, I think Clinchfield came on. And honestly, it was a decent route. Um, it's a bit slow, but it's a coal hauling, I don't want to say a mountain pass, but it just follows the, the rivers and the hollows all through Appalachia, and it's quite tight and I gotta say I've been messing around with these things for about the last hour just you know having a go having a little fun and uh, they are pretty interesting running through these mountains because uh, there's some tight tight and narrow curves and it's just neater than I don't know what seeing these uh, the articulated bits on the uh, the chassis of the train moving around and going around the curves and whatnot so that's pretty neat and then they're squeezing through these super small tunnels it's uh it's it's pretty nuts but they work they work well there's not a whole lot of great rolling stock out there uh as far as colgons we do have a few of, of packs past um i'm using the uh currently i'm using the cno i think 70 ton ribbed gons that came with the uh the bno mountain sub from high iron simulations but you can go over to uh, golden age of railroading and, uh, and pick up just about any pack you can think of with some of the, um, the uh, what are they, the offy and the uh, the ribbed 50-tonners, uh, 70-tonners, and 100-tonners. I don't know if they ran 100-tonners by this time, um, but I do know they did some 50s and some 70s. But uh, anyway, Clinchfield enjoyed these. Um, 
in game, like I said, you're going to get six. So they're the X DNRG W6 that you're going to get 670 through 675. They've got a few variations uh, from the UP and the DNR uh, DNRG W variant. Uh, and of course, you're going to need the heavy challenger pack to begin with, as I mentioned. But uh, so you're going to get two. I've got the weathered one on the right here. Which, of course, looks very nice. These are the HD variants. Uh, as a lot of you know, there's HD and standard depth variants to kind of help with frames and processing power a little bit. These are both the HD variants. And they look good. I mean, it's the Challenger with uh, a little bit of clinchage. Numbers look very nice, of course. And then the golden clinch field on the side of the tender there number on the rear as well and this one over here is the clean variant which uh, you know I'm all about the dirty one because uh, like I was talking about in the Alco C424 video really dark locomotives and trains and rolling stock are kinda hard to see in this game maybe it's just me I don't know but uh, when you've got like a weathered variant and someone's just like a gray it just stands out a lot better so my my personal fave is, is already that one uh, they did add these number plates when they got the clinch field, so the smoke box door looks a little different. It's got its own kind of character, so that looks nice. That's 672 there and 675 right there. They look good, though. Something else they did, uh, clinch field, they, and, and the, they had something to do with the, the coal that they burned um, because I think coal on this part of the states uh, in the Appalachian was a little less uh, good. We'll say good. I'm using big words today. A little less good. Uh, so they went to a single stack variant. These still have the twins. So these would have been straight from uh, DNRGW if I'm not mistaken. They might have changed these, but it might have just been the E1s and E2s that had the single stack. And then, of course, there were one of these uh, that did a Santa Train special uh, that ran through these hollers and mountains of uh, this Clinchfield Railroad area general location, uh, I think back in 1992. So that's pretty cool. You could do something like that if you want. Now, the the UP coach cars that we have, the streamlined cars, are old. And, well, they're just really old. So, I mean, you could do that thing if you want and just run through here. That'd be kind of fun, I reckon. But uh, otherwise, just coal haul. But uh, it gives us an excuse to get back on the Clinchfield Railroad because, you know, like I said, I, I think it's a fairly decent route. It's not the best North American route, not by a long shot, but it's new, and it's almost in my neck of the woods, so it's a little special to me, I guess you could say. But uh, And it's nice to have something to use these on that just isn't out west. Anyway, let's hop in one and just ride down the road a bit. All right, so we're up here in Elkhorn City on the northernmost part of the map. I'll just show you just in case you're curious. And uh, look at all this. You get to run this mammer jammer through. It is, uh, it is, it is fairly interesting running this thing through here. It's, uh, it's crazy. It's like, I don't know. I liken it to running, say, an SD80 Mac on that little chorus railway thing. You know, it almost feels like that to a degree, but uh, Clinchfield very much like these. They had some of these, uh, well, they didn't have these. They had some fairly similar to these before they got a hold of these, but they definitely dearly used them uh, right up until, you know, the golden age of dieselization. And even then, I think they still kept some on the roster, at least two or three, if I'm not entirely mistaken, and I most likely am, uh, up until, I think, 1962, uh, which is pretty darn cool so i just have a couple of rando empty coal guns here we're sitting at the coal mine we're going to take these back south or i don't know take it to a processing plant or something like that just fire this thing up and run it down the road have a look around all that good stuff see if anything's changed get that auto engineer going Auto engineer on this thing is my buddy. I've uh, I've I've been tinkering with it a tiny bit, trying to trying to run her all by my lonesome. But uh, I am not prepared for this video. That is for damn sure. 
track's a little wet. And it looks amazing, I gotta say. I, I of course have the Armstrong Powerhouse Weather Enhancement Pack for anybody wondering, and I have it set to Stormy. And it looks incredible in here. I've never ran uh, through the clinch field on this type of weather. Um, and it, it fits. It really fits in here. Because sometimes it's just a little too bright back in here. So, I think it looks quite appropriate. Check the horn out. That's still the uh, the Hollywood show horn, if you will. Now, there is the secondary horn that, that you know, was already part of the pack. So, if you hit shift control space, it goes to it. And if I'm not mistaken, I read something about this horn because I didn't think it sounded that great. Although, it, it's more apropos to the, to the real deal and what these things sounded like whistle-wise and their boiler pressure. Um, but there's something up with the sound file where it's got a very abrupt end. And if I'm not mistaken, I read something either from Smokebox or a post on Dovetail, uh, Dovetail's form or something that the whistle is supposed to be fixed. But it's not fixed, so I'm going to go ahead and pop it now. Yeah, see, it still cuts out really abruptly. And that honestly wouldn't be a bad sound, uh, you know it to have a nice smooth ending to it. If I'm not mistaken, that whistle I think was from Michael Cam, aka a fan railer, and the other one, I think Woody, uh, Anthony Wood of Searchlight Simulation, either did that or back up. He either got this whistle or uh, helped immensely with it. If if I'm not mistaken, and again, I very much most likely am. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, sweet baby Jesus. All right, let's try that again, shall we? Okay. And we're back. So, yeah, I had... Uh, <laughs> I had the adhesion because there's so many options with this thing. I'm not going to go over them. Uh, I will link up in the top right-hand corner. There should be a little box to pop up that will kind of look over the, the, the heavy Challenger in its original state when it first came out. And that will go over a lot more of this locomotive overall. This is just an addendum or a revision to that original packet. An added livery, if you will. So I'm not really going to go over a whole lot of stuff, technicalities, and things of that nature. But you can change the rail adhesion with uh, Shift 3 and Control 3. And that will take it up and down. So it is obviously raining. It's coming down cats and dogs and that whole thing. And uh, I had it set to wet leaves. So, oh, look, that is close right there. Oh, boy. Yeah, we just smashed into this thing here, that coal loader tipple proper term tip but uh yeah so so that was sketchy we not only started a forest fire in the middle of a monsoon but uh i look like a complete idiot and and the engine blew up now here's the articulation which you'll see a lot a lot of on clinchfield look at that that is absolutely badass And see, that's the thing about this. Like, I'm probably never going to be able to operate this thing like one should. But that's the beauty of these packs from Smokebox. You don't, you don't need to. You can be a, a dingus like me and just enjoy it. Because that's it. I just enjoy this thing. It's like, it's like having a fish tank with pretty fish in it. You know, just watch it and enjoy it. But uh, I'll, I'll hopefully figure it out one day. But it's, it's fun just to watch. Let me check this line out of here so we don't get stopped up by this dull arm. There we go. We'll hop in here. So I think, as far as I can tell, it, it pretty much looks identical in here. And we're going to turn that right down. Yeah, it's got that, uh, it's got that 
Uncle Pete green. I think the other one's green. I'm, I'm not seeing any lettering. Uh, or anything like that. This thing is just incredible. So yeah, just a quickie. There's not a whole heck of a lot to go over with this thing. I hope I covered, um, you know, enough in all fairness. Just in case you may not have been aware that this thing is now available. If you have already got the Heavy Challenger pack, all you need to do is update it via Steam. That is it. And then you'll have it. Uh, hopefully this other horn... will get fixed. I swear I read something about that being updated. I wonder if it didn't uh, get ported to the to the Clinchfield engine. I'm not totally sure, but uh, that one still sounds very, very good. But uh, yeah, guys, so the Clinchfield 4664, what they call the E3, is out and available. If you don't already have the Heavy Challenger, if you go and buy it for $24.99, it'll have not only the Union Pacific, the DNR GW, but now the Clinchfield Railroad. And I cannot wait to uh, to get back in these hills and hollows and operate this thing because it's uh, it's kind of funky. It's it's just amazing this massive monstrous engine just rolled through these hills like you know like it was nothing pulling heavy, heavy coal trains. It's uh, very, very unique. But anyway, it's out. I'll link it down below, as usual, to the pack and the article, if you would like to read the article as well, uh, announcing its forthcomingness. But uh, that's it. Yep, Clinchfield Challenger, a.k.a. E3, is available now. Update it via Steam. If you don't have it, go buy it. So this is good. I'll see you later. Bye. Thank you.